Good morning. Welcome to Winnipeg. Okay, I've been at the model table for about an hour. And I've been going through all my paints and stuff like that. And what I was looking for is the liquid mask. And the idea was that I'm going to put the liquid mask on the clear canopy on the planes. So, okay, bottom line is I can't find it. And I have looked all over the place. I've, I've looked through this. I, I can't even remember anymore what kind of a container it came in. I think it came in a, in a little bottle. It looked something like this. Um, now, may, maybe the, the liquid mask went, uh, went hard on me. And uh, I threw it out. I don't know. Uh, I'm trying to think back. When was the last time I used it? And I think I used it on the on the deck of the hood, which would be about three years ago, four four years ago. And uh, I think I used it to fill in gaps where the masking tape uh, wasn't completely covering. At least that's that's what I sort of remember. But then I also remember having had something solidify on me <clears throat> and somebody come in the comments were something to the effect of well yeah that that stuff do, does go hard over time after it's opened uh so maybe that's what happened i don't know bottom line is i don't have it so i can't can't put it on so then i thought well what about the uh the blue that i you know shade of blue that i want to try and make up for it to paint the the top of, of the airplane and uh, the only blue I've got is, is this one here which is, which is a clear blue <laughs> uh, I guess I could mix a little bit of that in with something else maybe some gray or something like that to give it sort of a I, I don't know or maybe being as that the weather's going to be nice today maybe I should Go down to Hobby Sense and, or maybe if I want to save myself some, some time, just go to uh, Eliminator Hobby, which is a lot closer. I, I can get to Eliminator in about 10 minutes or less. Uh, so, uh, I, I just don't know what to do this morning. Uh, I know one thing I should do when I was going through all these paints, I was thinking I should throw a lot of this stuff out. You know, you wonder what's what's our world going to be like a thousand years from now if we keep throwing stuff like this out you know because because these little little jars they won't biodegrade <laughs> uh yeah the world's probably going to be a real mess you know i was on the i was checking the news i think it was yesterday and here in canada apparently our government passed some sort of legislation that you can't the manufacturers or retailers can't sell single-use plastic containers like a plastic straw or a pla the plastic bags that they used to give you at the at the grocery store. And when I first first heard that, I thought, well, that's going to be a little inconvenient. And then I thought, yeah, but we got we got to think of the future. Well, just yesterday, I read where the Supreme Court. At least, at least I think it was a Supreme Court here in Canada, overthrew that ruling. Like, what's wrong with this? I mean, who lobbied the Supreme Court? Uh, probably the plastic manufacturers, <laughs> the straw, the straw making people. <laughs> yeah, it, we human beings are so selfish. Uh, it's it's unbelievable how selfish we are. What a what an awful species. <laughs> uh, yeah, we 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 just care about ourselves right for the right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, you know, remember remember I remember when I was a kid the the milk bottles. You, we used to take the milk bottle back to the store and they used to refill it. And uh, then the single-use milk bottles uh, came out, you know, the, the wax containers. Well, I, I don't know how something like that would biodegrade. Maybe, maybe it would over a thousand years, but, uh, you know, sitting outside. But uh, 
You know, if it'll hold milk for months and months and months, you know, if you happen to forget it in your fridge like sometimes I do. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, uh, let, let's uh, stop griping here. And uh, we, we got, I got to do something because uh, uh, I, am, I am so close to being done the Iowa. It is so close to being done right now. It, once these planes are done and stuck down and then there's just a few little other things and test tubes that we have to put place and and I'm going to quit. I'm going to quit on it. It'll be it'll be ready for the case. And uh it's almost like I I don't want it to I don't want this this build to end or something because I'm doing a lot of stalling here. A lot of stalling. Uh, oh, I made my uh my Christmas cakes last night. <laughs> Well, maybe we'll talk about that later. Uh, hey, I forgot muffin number four. Got to go get that. Yeah. Um, okay. Sorry, Mrs. Gabe. I, uh, and, and they are so good, too. <laughs> I'm wondering, is there anybody that uh, tried to copy that recipe that I put on the screen yesterday and try and bake those? If, if there is, in, in the comments. Now, maybe, maybe somebody did comment. I did come to think of it, I didn't read all my comments from yesterday, so uh, who, who knows, maybe somebody tried it out. Uh, don't know where you get the time, though. Uh, anyhow, yeah, so if you try that recipe out and like it in the comments below, say, hey, we tried it, we liked it, it was good. Thank you. <laughs> uh, okay, let's, uh, let's get sensible here and... Uh, Maybe I will experiment to see if I can take a little bit of this or this blue and mix it with a little bit of gray and see what would it what would it look like. You know, the the tops of those planes wouldn't wouldn't be a bright shiny blue. They would be a very dull blue, so that when you any anything flying over the battleship, it would sort of blend in with the sea. I mean, that's the whole idea. But. Uh, uh, at least that was the idea back in 1944. <laughs> Nowadays it doesn't make any difference. Yeah, the, the the enemy knows exactly where you are to the meter. And don't kid yourself. I remember, oh, what was it about 20 years ago? There was this 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 stealth uh, cruiser of some kind, like a battleship cruiser uh, destroyer, came out, and the idea was supposed to be stealth, and no one was going to know where it was. Well, I got news for you. The other guys knew where that was from the time it went down the slipway. <laughs> yeah, with satellite technology and so on. Yeah, the, the, the world is changing. When are we going to smarten up and st stop hurting each other? <laughs> okay, uh, enough uh, political jargon going on here. Let's, uh, yeah, let's just, let's just try this. But first, I got to go get a muffin. Okay, what I'm going to try to do here is uh, take some number 23 blue and mix it with the 66 gray. And I'll probably do an, an equal amount of both. And, uh, oh, one of the viewers was mentioning they thought that the float was separating. It looked like it was separating. I don't know. I, I'm looking at it here and I, I can't really see that. Maybe if we slip the macro lens on and take a real close look, we'll be able to see it because the macro lens can, you know, see it infinitely better than I can right now. Uh, I'm, I'm sort of seeing something, but, uh, uh, yeah. Oh, by the way, 53 grams. So we're looking at about, uh, oh, 150 calories there, I guess, maybe. Good to the last crumb. Okay, I've got my lighting adjusted here, and I'm thinking if we've got a crack going on, we should be able to see it. And for you camera buffs, the reason that the green cloth underneath there is so dark is because I have my lighting, or my f-stop, one full stop underexposed. So it kind of darkens the plastic. Now, uh, maybe I should be watching the monitor here.
Yes. Mark, you were right. If we if we got it just like this, you can see that there is a gap there. Now, where's a pair of tweezers here? We'll take one of take Tony's tweezers and just come in here and see if we can push this together. Will will that actually work? Kind of wants to. Okay, I think what we can do maybe is uh, take some extra thin quick setting and get it in that crack and somehow rig up a clamp on that. I see that it's, it's pointed, so what happens is it when you squeeze it together, well there, that's, that's kind of working, isn't it? Yeah, that, that's working. Let's just turn it the other way, maybe let's move it more into the... Bring the tweezer down. No, no, when they... Oh, there we go. Now, now we can see it. Now we can see it. All right. Let's uh, push stop here for a moment. Now I'm wondering, would a pair of self-locking tweezers... Let's see here, can we... I have to get it in so that I can come in from the... Okay, are these going to slip off? No. They, they don't slip off. And, and they do seem to hold it shut. Alright, now where's our uh, quick setting? Oops, that wasn't supposed to happen. I'm trying to get it so that I can lay the tweezer down here. All right. Oh! Maybe, maybe I should bring it up like this. That, that might be better. There we go, like that. I'll, I'll recompose. Okay, we'll give that about an hour. Okay, this little scale is supposed to be able to tell the difference of a thousandth of a gram of something. So uh, we're going to try and put equal amounts here. Now the idea of this plastic cover is so that if you can, you would try to have your whatever like that, and the idea is that just speaking on it, the, the, the puff of your breath will change it. Now, I don't think we need to worry about that kind of accuracy here. Um, I'm going to use uh, different pipettes. Now, speaking of pipettes, earlier in the episode we were talking about the impact on the environment that plastic straws have. I remember Nigel Frampton made a comment uh, or he replied to, I think it was one of my comments, something about pipettes and how he didn't like to use them because of the um, negative uh, effect on the environment. Okay, so let's let's get ourselves ready here. And we're going to try not to put the blue lid on the gray container and vice versa. 
I did shake these up in my paint shaker a little while ago. Okay, so we're going to, if we turn this on with the, that thing in there, it should, uh, come on, go to, there we go, it should go to zero. All right, now let's, let's just test it here and make sure we're actually going to be able to, oh yeah, it's going to work, okay. All right, um, I don't think it matters uh, too much about how much we put in as long as it's going to be the, the equal amount in both in both of them. So we'll go like this. Okay. So that's almost half half a half a uh, milligram. Okay, so it, it's it's uh, maybe I better put a little more in. So we can we can mix it, otherwise we're not gonna be able to mix it up here. I want it to go right across the entire bottom. Okay, now, so we've got, let's try and remember this now. We've got 1.066. Okay, now I'm going to, I'm going to zero it. Okay, so that's 1.066. Let's try and do the same in the blue. Okay, now we want 1.066. some more you know there's a possibility that this is going to coagulate instead of a mix okay we're getting close to one here eight nine one point zero okay let's quit because we're, we're slightly got, we got a teensy weensy bit more. Oh no, wait a minute, 1.066. Oh no, wait a minute, maybe we can put one more drop in. 6.6 six we went, not 11. Put one more drop, see what one drop will do. Hmm? Another drop. Another drop. Okay, now we are a teensy bit over. It's it's pretty close, isn't it, guys? Yeah. You know, I suppose what I could do, I, I was planning on using this little empty jar, and I suppose what I could do is I could pour this in there and then shake it, and then it would blend really, really well. I just wanted to make sure I get all the all the blue that's stuck on the bottom, if you know what I mean. You know, this this might be all right. It might be all right. I'll try it on a piece of plastic and and see how how it looks after it dries. Um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna pour it in this in this jar because I want to put it in something that's not going to evaporate anyway. And um, let's try not to make a mess here now. Oh, look, there's a lot of pigment still on the bottom there. Uh, maybe that swab was not the best thing to do. Maybe I should... Yeah, like I thought, the, uh, the blue was sort of stuck on the bottom there. Oh, it's becoming more blue now, isn't it? Yeah. Maybe it's going to be too dark of a blue, but I don't think so. I'm going to push stop here and just get this mixed, and then we'll look at it after it's in the jar. Okay, I just shook this up. Let's see if it's starting to separate here. It's going to... Probably going to be all right. Now, I'm using one of Gabe's thirsty brushes. They don't get much more thirsty than that. I don't want to waste it. So sort of hold it down there, maybe. This is probably going to take two coats. So let's let that dry. Maybe put a little more on there. Or am I being a moron? Okay. 
Okay, let's let that dry. Maybe we'll get our whoops, get our lid on here. I I got a feeling that's going to be just about right. Okay, we are dry. Let's give it another coat here. I realize that I'm painting an area right now that I did not paint before. Okay, let's let that dry and see what it looks like later. We're going to kind of help it along here. Okay, now is it still wet right here or does it just look like it's wet? No, I, th I think what's happening is because the, uh, the blue was sort of a gloss type paint and was a clear. Yeah, we got a little bit of, it's not as flat. But you know, I think this is going to look all right. I really do. Okay. Now, the underside of the plane is supposed to be an off-white. But I am just wondering here if I I'm probably better off just painting everything this color right here because the underside is not going to be seen. In fact, in, in, my, in the case that I'm putting the, the ship in, we will be basically looking down on the, on the, uh, on, on the aircraft and the whole ship actually. Uh, the, um, my, my problem is here, can I paint up to the lines of where the canopy is and and not paint the uh, the canopy or am I going to make a mess of it and maybe should later paint the canopy sort of a silver or something but I, I, I'm going to give it a try and see if I can paint everything except the, the, the canopy. Now let me get something to point with here. This this part right here that I'm touching right now is is actually supposed to be painted. I'm pretty sure. And the clear part would be right right here and also from here to here where the observer would sit. Okay. Um yeah, that would that's supposed to be clear. Now I don't know if I can paint that delicately or not, even with one of Gabe's special pointy brushes. But I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try it. Uh, fasten it down on a rotator or something so that I can, you know, just get in and rotate everything around and drive everybody crazy. Um, yeah, I think maybe what I'll do is I will paint the, the basically the the underneath first, and and then uh, and then I'll paint the top last, and then we'll touch up things like the propeller. Uh, may, maybe I can get in where the where the cylinders are on the engine, um, and then paint the propeller after. I don't know. Uh, I would think I'm going to check Stefan's drawing. I I would think that the uh, the float is is probably the, uh, the the same color as the top here. I want to be careful I don't break anything off. Okay, we we did leave manage to leave one of these. Uh, Pedo tubes on, even though it is on the wrong wing tip. Most people won't know that. Um, 
I think I think people that know anything about airplanes will know that this is supposed to be a pitot tube, not a machine gun. <laughs> okay. All right. And en enough twisting it around here. Now, let's just go ahead and uh, I'll, I'll paint the underneath first. Oh, oh, what I will do though is I will try to maybe paint paint the uh, the bombs uh, maybe black. Yeah, it's just so they stand out a little bit. But um, I wonder, I wonder about the struts on the uh, pontoons. Well, we'll wait till 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 we get to that. In the meantime, let's let's uh, re get everything fastened down here. This this is dry now. Yeah, I think that, I think that's going to look fairly realistic. Well, what do we got going on here? Plus eight point eight. Now I don't think it's that warm. It's uh, snow isn't really melting enough for it to be that warm, but the snow is melting, and I think the bike path might be clear. I want to go out and give it a try. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to wear my chest cam or not. We'll see how it goes. Uh, yeah, if, if there's ice anywhere on the bike path, I'm turning around and coming back. I'm not going to take a chance. Uh, nothing more slippery than wet ice. <laughs> well, it probably is, but uh, not on the bike path there won't be. <laughs> uh, okay, I was going to say something funny unless it's... Uh, <laughs> dog poop. <laughs> I hope I don't run into another dog. That was that was something, I'll tell you. I'll probably never have that happen again, I hope. Anyway, uh, yeah, uh, I'm going to wrap her up. We're going to go at this again tomorrow. We're going to have to uh, take a look at the uh, uh, Christmas cake another time. We just don't have time. As the old saying goes, so much to do and so little time. <laughs> okay, thanks for watching everybody. All being well, we're going to see you tomorrow. <laughs>